Hello. In this topic, we'll consider classifying a partnership. Wait, did he just say partnerships? Yes, even though we're dealing with corporate tax, this topic really focuses on partnerships and there's some elements of corporate tax that come into play. You're gonna see that when it comes to a business entity, choice of entity is very important and the way that an entity is taxed can be treated as a partnership for federal tax purposes or can be a corporation. So please make sure you follow this. Even though, again, the focus is on partnerships, you will see that certain steps in this partnership classification do result in corporations, which then goes to corporate taxation. Now, I know what you're thinking, a partnership, you know exactly what that is. Maybe you've had a business law course or you know the definition of partnership for state law. But remember, we're talking about for federal tax purposes. That does not necessarily mean that the definition for a partnership under state law is the same for federal tax purposes. Now, here are some typical entities that under the, under the federal tax law are considered a partnership for tax purposes. So we do use what we define as a partnership under state law or local law. So general partnerships under state or local law, limited partnerships under state or local law, a limited liability partnership, an LLP, a limited liability limited partnership, right? That is an LLLP, right? Um, and by the way, if you don't know the difference between an LLP, a limited liability partnership versus a limited liability limited partnership, the main difference has to do with, if you look at the creation of a partnership and a limited partnership, general partnerships came before limited partnerships. And the idea is that as time progressed, the limitation on liability aspect that many of you out there know about with respect to different types of business entities, that evolved. And when we first had a limited partnership, as you know, only the limited partners got the limited liability, the general partner did not. However, for a limited liability partnership and a limited liability limited partnership, all members have limited liability. Now, how exactly did that evolve? Well, if a partnership was a general partnership before and the law changed where you could become every partner got limited liability, then you would go from a general partnership to a limited liability limited partnership, an LLP, a limited liability partnership, okay? Um, sorry, I misspoke there. So a general partnership to a limited liability partnership because all the members were general partners, so now all members have limited liability. If you were a limited partnership, and again, the, the law changed, so you can now be, get all members to be limited, um, have limited liability, you were a limited liability limited partnership. So that's really where the change came about. I always try to um, let you know because people are always wondering, well, what's the difference between these two? It really just has to do with what you were before and then with respect to the law changing. Now, this is the key one that we're going to spend some time talking about. Limited liability companies, which as many of you know, are becoming increasingly popular and they are one of the most popular types of business, business entities out there. And also certain business trusts. So all of these are generally what you see of see as with respect to an entity being taxed as a partnership. All right, now we're going to talk more in detail about the specific rules I just wanted to give you an idea, you know, if you're dealing with those types of entities under local law, state law, that's generally how they're treated. But we'll get in more details. So there's really, before I talk about the steps in um, how a partnership, how the law um, is applied with respect to partnership taxation, it's important to understand the definition of a partnership. Now, subchapter K of the Internal Revenue Code, which is the 700s, the 700 sections is where you find the rules on partnerships. All right, and as the last slide said, you you might not be a partnership under local or state law, but you might apply the laws of the partnership. So that's an important concept to understand. So for example, you might be a limited liability company. However, you might be treated as a partnership for tax purposes. If you're treated as a partnership for tax purposes, we're looking at subchapter K, subchapter K, versus remember subchapter C, deals with corporations in general. So the definition of partnership is defined in section 761A. So partnership includes syndicate, pool, a group, pool, joint venture, or other unincorporated organization through which business, financial operation, or venture is carried on. That definition is a very broad definition, very broad. It can be an activity, 
That's the key to understand this broad definition. So I want to highlight there a theme in tax that this definition is broad, very broad. So make sure you note that it's very broad. It's possible to elect out of the partnership taxation rule, subchapter K, um, if it's investment only business, it's joint production, or their security underwriting syndicate. Now I'm not, you know, you don't have to know the specifics of that. Um, that's beyond the scope of this video, but I just want to bring that to your attention. So now it's important that we go through a four step. There's going to be four steps to classify an arrangement as a partnership. Now, why do I say arrangement? Because remember, it's not as simple as just saying, oh, do we have a business entity out there? All right. If we don't have an entity, it's still possible to have a partnership. So what do I mean? Let's say that you are a sole proprietor and you are an accountant and you work with another sole proprietor accountant out there, but under local law, you never formed a partnership, but maybe you do some type of um, business profit sharing because maybe you deal with tax law and the other um, accountant, I'm sorry, you prefer taxes and the other account maybe does consulting, tax consulting. So one maybe does tax compliance, one does tax consulting, but in no way do you want to form a partnership with that person um, for general purposes. Well, under the tax law, even though you're not a partnership under um, state law purposes, and remember, you're, you're a sole proprietorship under state law purposes, it's possible depending on your activity, depending on your activity, you can actually be treated as a partnership for tax purposes. So the first step is whether we have, if, do we have an entity? If we do have an entity, we continue to step two. But if we don't have an entity, you can have a partnership without tax, without local law entity. That's important to understand. So in my example, where one sole proprietor, again, under your, your sole proprietorship under state or local law, right? And another sole proprietor, it's possible they can be, Again, treat as a partnership for tax purposes, two individual owners under sole proprietorships, depending on their activity. Now, there was a case. There was a case called a U.S. Supreme Court case that happened in 1949 called Colbertson. Sorry, Colbertson versus Commissioner. Supreme Court case. And this is really the main case out there with respect to um, the jurisprudence dealing with whether an activity is considered going to be treated as a, uh, as, a, um, as a partnership for tax purposes. Now, the court really focused on two things. They focused on the, the actual business activity and the fact that the parties are sharing profits. If there's no sharing of profits or no business activity with respect together, then you will not have a... Um, you will not have a partnership for tax purposes. That's the key. Now, that's not always the case. That's a general rule. Now, one thing I want to know is that undertaking solely to share expenses do not create a separate entity. So again, in our example with the two sole proprietors that are both, account both accountants, one does tax compliance, one does tax consulting. If they just share, and you know they're both sole proprietorships under uh, Florida law, let's say, if they're just together just to share expenses, maybe they both share office space. Well, that's a different story. If they don't have anything to do with profit sharing or business sharing, then that's different. But if they're just there to share office space, that's cost sharing is okay. Cost sharing does not raise the, um, the bar with respect to whether it's a partnership for tax purposes. So we distinguish contractual relations, loans with equity interest, legal with, um, lease with equity rent, and tenancy in common. Those, um, depending on the situations, can create various... Um, partnerships, again, if you don't have a partnership under local law, but that's the key. And you don't even have an entity under local law. That's the key. All right. So let's continue with step two. So let's say that we do have an entity. Let's proceed to step two. So if we don't have an entity, we have to, we have to consider the facts. Again, Colbertson and those two issues, the profits, motive, and doing business together. So we do have an entity. So let's continue. So in step two, we can, we um, distinguish whether that entity is a trust. And that's all I'm really going to say about that. I know I have some discussion here um, with specifics. You're welcome to look at that. Um, again, that's a little bit beyond the scope. But we're distinguishing a trust from a business entity. That's the key. So we had an entity under step one. Now we're distinguishing a trust 
from a business entity. So let's just go ahead and say we have a business entity. So we have a business entity, we, uh, con we continue to step three. In step three, now we have to classify, we have to classify the business entity. And this is where we get into the regs in the Internal Revenue Code, Reg 301.7701, dash two and dash three. Now dash two defines a corporation. So a business entity can either be a corporation or partnership for tax purposes. Oh, I'm sorry, or disregarded entity. Those are your three choices. It can either be a corporation or it can be a partnership or disregarded entity. Now partnership or disregarded entity have the general same tax treatment, but one disregarded entity, there's no actual form that needs to be um, prepared. But there are some distinguishing factors between a disregarded entity and a partnership. One being that with a disregarded entity, you follow the accounting methods and um, the uh, accounting uh, calendar year. I'm sorry, account the accounting year based on the individual owner versus a partnership. You look at the actual partnership itself. You don't look at the owners. So a partnership has two or more versus a disregarded entity only has one. That's the key distinction. A corporation can have one or more. You can have one owner or more. It's important to understand that a partnership for tax purposes has to have at least two or more. A disregarded entity can only have one, but a corporation can have one or more. So now there's some types, there's some per se corporations out there that it's it's not possible to be treated as anything else. If you're a per se corp corporation, you're automatic and you don't get number two. You can't be a partnership or disregarded entity. So the co the uh, regulations, they summarize that. Um, it summarizes a corporation under under state law, so incorporated body, um, incorporated, that's, that's the corporation under state law. Sorry about that. That's a corporation under state law. And there's also certain types of foreign entities out there. There's a list, and there's even more guidance out there with respect to different, type, different types of foreign entities that translate to a U.S. corporation. They're also, they're listed. There's different types out there. So that's, that's just what I wanted to mention. There's different types of foreign entities. Now, if the entity is not a per se corporation, it's considered an eligible entity, and that's where we get into the check the box regulations. And where that's where you can you can elect to be treated as any of these. So the idea is that at step three, you classify the business entity. If you're a corporation, you're a per se corporation, you can only be a corporation. Only a corporation. Only a corporation. But if you're not considered a corporation and you are a business entity, that's where you can start getting to choose. You have the choice. We call that the check the box regs. Check the box. So finally, in step four, we classify the eligible entity. So remember, if you're not a per se corporation, you can be classified. And this is um, reg 301.7701-3. This is the check the box. Check the box. The idea here is that if you're not a per se corporation, again, looking at the previous slide, right, going back to the previous slide, you can either be considered a corporation, a partnership, or a disregarded entity. You can't be a part consider a partnership for tax purposes if you only have one owner. You can't be considered a disregarded entity if you have two or more owners. So basically, think of that with respect to the um, the treat the um, election. You that's key. But remember, corporation can be one or more. So check the box says that un this is a form. The form is 8832. 8832 and look that up sometime it's a very interesting form it's a short form but it really is check the box the reason we call it check the box is because you actually get the check on the form so this eligible entity that's not a per se corporation can be taxed as a corporation or a partnership or disregard depending on again how many owners the default classification for a domestic entity so by default we mean what if you do not form sorry file the, the form 8832, so you don't for, file that form. So for domestic entities, the default rule is that you're a partnership or disregarded entity. And that's important because partnerships or disregarded entities are one level of taxation, one level of tax. Unless you are treated as a corporation, then you're an S corporation, which is also one level of tax. But remember, partnerships or disregarded entities are one level of taxation. If you're foreign, then you're treated as a corporation if all members have limited liability, partnership if some have unlimited liability.
That's important to understand. So the idea here is to check the box regulations. They provide default rules. If you don't file, if you do not file, so they provide default rules if you do not file an election. As I mentioned earlier in the presentation, limited liability um, companies are very popular right now with respect to business entity formation. Again, there's a lot of issues here that, aren't, that are not tax related that drive decisions. So under local law, under state local law, the business decides to be a limited liability company, which is good for various purposes, which we'll um, mention later on down the road. However, for tax purposes, they be, they, they're going to be treated as a corporation. And why would they do this? You say, well, that's double taxation. Because they can elect to be treated as an S corporation. And the reason that we do that is really two purposes. One, the first thing, and we're going to talk about this later on um, in, another, in another video, is an S corporation has advantages over an LLC with respect to uh, self-employment tax issues. And also, from a non-tax perspective, a S corporation has... Um, an LLC for non -tax, sorry, LLC for non-tax purposes has better liability purposes. And I'll explain that again in our topic as well. So those are really the four steps. This slide um, right here just talks about publicly traded partnerships. So the idea here is that certain publicly traded partnerships must be treated as a corporation. And the definition is that the interests are traded on an established securities market or readily tradable on a secondary market. Now they're taxed as corporations. They can't be taxed any other way. So they're going to be taxed as corporations, meaning double taxation, unless 90% of the income is qualifying investment income or 90%, um, I'm sorry, if, if it is met, then it's treated as a partnership. Treated as a partnership. So that really is the end of the presentation with respect to classifying a partnership.